Hey everyone, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. So today we will learn how to hide and show different product images based on the current selected variant. And that's gonna be a bit more advanced because we also have to write some JavaScript code. But I think Josie has been doing fantastic in breaking everything down, explaining everything step by step. So I'm sure you can do it and let us know if you have any questions or what you wanna see next. And then happy coding and let's dive right in. Hey everyone. Today, I'm going to show you how you can display only the images that belong to the selected variant on your product page. Notice that I have color swatches here. If you're interested in having them in your store, you can check out our latest tutorial to implement these by clicking on the info card on the top right corner. Concerning the images, currently, I have the first option selected, which is red, but all the images are simultaneously being displayed as well. Preferably, we only want to show the images of the current color selected. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can achieve that in the Dawn theme, but also on the free themes listed on the screen since they have the same code base. So let's get started. First, we're going to take a look at our product setup. Here, each variant has a featured image assigned to it, except for orange, but we'll get back to that later. Next, we want to group our images with their appropriate color, and we can do that by clicking on the image and assigning an alt text. So here we can click add alt text, we'll type in red, click save, and I've done this for all of our shirts. The alt text must be the same for each group. Our red shirts will have the red alt text, as you can see here. Our blue shirts will have the blue alt text, and our green shirts will have the green alt text. So let's go back to our product page. We need to find which HTML element we want to edit. So we're going to right click on one of our thumbnails and click inspect. And notice that our thumbnail is actually a button inside this list element. So each thumbnail is a list item with a class called product media item. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this class because we're going to use it to search for it in our code editor. So let's go back to our theme. And before we edit our code, make sure to duplicate your theme first. So we can click the ellipsis, click duplicate. And on our copy, we can click the ellipsis and click edit code. Since our customizations are on the product page, the file we'll be working in is called main product. Here, we can search for our class by pressing Control F or Command F and paste the class we just copied, product media item. Click enter or next. And we have two instances of our class being used. The first instance is an if statement for our featured image. The second instance is inside this for loop, which displays our thumbnails. This loop is going to iterate through all the product images, in this case media, inside the product.media object. So media can either be an image or a video. The media variable will be rendered in this list item right here. We need to filter our thumbnails, and we can do that by checking if our thumbnail's alt text matches the featured image alt text. If the featured image is red and the thumbnail is blue, then we need to hide it. So let's use a liquid if statement to verify. We can type that here. So if, then we're going to use the product of the selected or first available variant of the featured image alt text. If it's not equal to media.alt, since the media object holds the image. Let's end our if statement. And if this is not equal, we're going to use an inline style and set our display to none. In our if statement, 
we have our first case. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we're going to add a second case to this. So we're gonna say and, we're gonna go ahead and paste. And where our media alt is, we're going to change this and say blank. And let's break this down. If our featured or selected image isn't equal to media.alt and it isn't equal to blank, then we want to hide these thumbnails. Let's save and go back to our product page and refresh. Notice how currently we only see our red images now. This is great, but we still have a problem. If we select another color, our solution doesn't work properly and we need to manually refresh the page. To avoid this, we need to add some JavaScript. Before we add our JavaScript, we need to show the alt text of our thumbnails in the front end. So let's go back to our code editor and we're going to add a custom HTML attribute. Let's call it thumbnail-alt. It's gonna be equal to media.alt. Let's click save and let's go back to our product page. Click refresh and let's inspect our thumbnail. So here's our button and let's scroll up to our list. And here we can see that the thumbnail alt is showing our color value, which is blue. Great. So now we have the ability to select the thumbnails using JavaScript. So let's go back to our code editor so we can write that. The file that we want to edit is called global.js. And since we want to edit the variant logic, let's search for variant in this file by pressing Control F or Command F. Click Next or hit Enter. So here we have an object called Variant Selects, and inside it has an event listener that listens to change and executes this function on variant change. This function also holds other functions like update options, update URL, and so on and so forth. So let's take advantage of this on variant change function to write our own filter image function inside of it. To do that, we're going to follow the same format. So this dot filter image variant, we're going to copy this. and define it here outside of the variant function. To write our function, we need to figure out how to select the currently selected variant. To do that, we can use this object, this.currentVariant, and this holds the currently selected variant, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to copy this, and we're going to console log it in our function. So console.log as well as a message like thumbnail updated. And then we can paste in our object here. Let's click save. So we can test our function to see if our message will be shown every time we update the variant. So let's go back to our product page, click refresh, right click to open our inspector tool. Click on the console tab. Let's clear this out. Now let's try selecting another variant. Notice how our thumbnail message has appeared with our current variant object. So let's select our other variants just to make sure that they're all working. So our function is executing every time I select a new variant, which is exactly what we want our function to do. Let's take a look at our object, which is the variant object, which holds all the information regarding the options, the name, and the price, etc. What we're interested in is the featured image. And inside, we have this alt text. So let's use this alt text of the currently selected image and compare it with our other thumbnails. So let's go back to our code editor. 
and let's remove our debug statement since we no longer need it. And let's begin by checking if our currently selected variant has a featured image and if the featured image has an alt text. And we can do that with an if statement. So here we're going to type if this dot current variant, which is our object dot featured image. And this will only be true if the featured image exists. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And after the statement, we're going to write our AND operator, and we're going to repaste the statement. And here, we want to look for the featured image alt text. So here, we're going to type dot alt. Inside this if statement, we're going to add a comment, and we want to show only the thumbnails for the selected color. We also need an else statement, so else. If the current variant doesn't have a featured image and an alt text, then we want to show all thumbnails. To filter the thumbnails, let's first hide all the thumbnails we have and only show the ones that match the featured image alt text. To do that, we're going to use a query. So document.querySelectorAll and we're going to use the HTML attribute we created earlier, thumbnail alt, to select all our thumbnails. So thumbnail alt. We want to create a loop that iterates through all the thumbnails and hides them one by one. Since this is an array, we can create a for loop, or we can use a higher order function like dot for each. It takes a callback function, image, which is applied to each image inside this array. So let's write our inline function. And for each image inside this array, we're going to access the style property. Inside of that, we have our display property. Since we use the query selector, we have access to these objects. So let's display our property to none. This line just hides the thumbnails. Now let's build a selector that we can use to show the images that match the alt text. First, let's create a variable, const current image alt, that just holds this value here. So let's copy this and paste it. Then let's build our thumbnail selector. Thumbnail selector. And we're going to use a string template and reuse this thumbnail alt. Copy and paste it in. What we want to achieve is to have this thumbnail alt equal red so that we can only select the thumbnail alt of value red, for example, or blue. So this value can change. So let's finish defining our thumbnail selector. So we're gonna write equal, quotes, dollar sign, open and close curly brackets, and inside, we're going to use our current image alt. So copy and paste that inside. Now we have our thumbnail selector. Now, let's reuse this selector, so copy, paste, and instead of selecting the thumbnail alt, we're actually going to use the thumbnail selector we just created. So we're going to copy that, I'm going to delete this, and paste, and let's change our display property to block, so we can show all our thumbnails. And in case we don't have a featured image or featured image alt, we want to show all the thumbnails. Let's do that by reusing the selector. So copy, and we're gonna paste it under, and we're gonna set the display property to block so we can display all our thumbnails. Click save, and let's go back to our product page and click refresh. So on load, our variant image filter is working, so let's select another variant. 
Great. So it's working properly on load and when we select another variant. So let's select a variant without a featured image. Awesome. And now everything is displayed. That concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or suggestions for the next tutorial, go ahead and leave a comment down below. As usual, you'll find the code used in today's tutorial linked in the description. See you in the next one. Bye.